So this is Baruch Fleischman, and we're at the Tikkun Elevator Kolel, and we're looking at this book written by this Dr. Chaim Beinart, a Jew from a Hasidic Russian family, a Russian Hasidic family, who came to Eretz Yisrael and ultimately became a tremendous scholar, mostly particularly on Sephardic Jews and the history of Sephardic Jews. Here we have... Uh, a midi uh, and and th uh, and what is it called an anthology uh, an atlas of all the different places the Jews were during different periods of time so here we have the 12th to the 15th centuries and we're going to focus here on the Jews of North Africa now to me uh, this is so very important because the title of the series that we're doing, and this is special edition, I, I think because of, of the tragedy, the bloodletting that took place in Eretz Israel, is to realize the condition of the Jews at different times. Now, in the previous sections, uh, we went over, say, for example, this map, which showed Babylonia. We saw the power that came from this place. The Jews were influential in uh, the this area of the world and specifically in this tigris euphrates valley they they built these large yeshivas that were funded and supported all throughout the world and the laws of the torah were promulgated and brought alive from this place it's like a wellspring but also took place in jerusalem as well and eretz israel also had a mediterranean in fact and now we're moving into a different uh different strata We'll see how the Jews, in fact, survived the Middle Ages from the 12th to the 15th centuries. So let's let's read what Dr. Beinart wrote. He says, The status of the Jews of North Africa, as in all other Islamic states, was that of a protected people, which he calls Dhimmi. So I don't know how you really pronounce that. That's the way I'm pronouncing it. The first hundred years of Muslim conquest were rather turbulent. There was no Pax Islamica. Naturally, this affected Jewish life. In other words, they fought amongst each other. During the, war, uh, during the waning of the Umayyad dynasty and the dawning of the Abbasid rule, a confederation of Berber tribes, which are across uh, North Africa, revolted against the Arab rulers in Cairo and Western Tripolitania, and we've heard this word called Tripoli, which refers to, to Libya. Ibn Rustam, one of the leaders of the revolt, fled and established a new state in central Algeria with its capital at Tiaret. Now we're going to see some of these things on the map. At the same time, another group established a kingdom in the city of Tlemisin. Another Berber tried to establish a state in the Tafilot Oasis, with its capital at Siljamaza. Excuse me, but Siljamaza. Despite religious differences, these states became important Jewish centers. So you had this fanatical Muslim thing going on, fighting amongst each other, killing each other, really spreading, spreading blood in their way. So, but they also, at the same time, the Jews prospered, must prosper there. Tirat was the residence of Rabbi uh, Yudha ben uh, Ibn Kuraish, Kuraish, or Korish, a well-known 9th century philologist. So that's what we're trying to do in other places, philologist, to study the origins of the words, to understand what the meanings are. A renowned author, uh, Jews lived on the island of Jerba, in the region of Jared to the Gabes, and in the area of Mizav and Kurlago. Kur, 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 I'm just not really doing well, Kuraglo. So he says, furthermore, when Egypt was conquered and the Caliphate established their Kairwan, uh, their Kairwan, they, uh, their period, comma, right? Kairwan became the grand trading center in Africa. So there's a place called Kairwan, which we're going to see on the map. As it was uh, as it was designated uh, in a legal document of the year 978, and a center for Jewish scholars, with the weakening of Fatiman rule in North Africa, government was transferred to the Zirids in Cairo. 
So you have all these different fights, all these different families, all this different control, and the Jews are in the middle of it. Yusuf Ibn Ziri, a Berber and founder of the, of the dynasty, was a loyal servant of the Fatimids in the days when they ruled the Maghreb. Now, Maghreb is another word for Morocco, or the Moroccos. He appointed his sons as governors in various places. Eventually, they grew strong and severed the relations with the Fatimids in Cairo, recognized the, recognizing the sovereignty of the Abbasids in, different, in distant Baghdad. Now, the, the rulership, the, the different kingdoms, uh, tribes, how it works uh, amongst the Arabs, I'm not really familiar with it. But let's get an idea of how things are changing constantly. Soon they established their city of Ashir, and Jews from various places were brought there. Rabbi Shreber Gon and Rabbi Samuel ben Hofni uh, corresponded with Jews of Ashir. Karawen was not exclusive in his special status as a center for Torah learning and Jewish life. In southern Tunisia, the city of Gabez was famous as mother city in Israel and a Torah center. So these are places of a thousand, eleven 1, hundred years ago, that we see the prospering of Jews in isolated places or in many places. This during the Arab rule. Fez, he says, uh, Fez's status as a Torah center was determined by the, determined by the residents there in the eleventh century, which was in the year one thousand or so. Rabbi uh, Yaisib ben Yaakov, also known as the Alfalzi, known as uh, as Alfasi, author of the Rif. So he was the Alfasi. He was the Rif. The Rif is a very f important, famous uh, standard of learning uh, the halachos of the Jewish people. So the Rif he writes in was born a uh, circa uh, ten thirteen, in Kalat Bani Hamad in Algeria. So this is all in North Africa, and died in 1103 at Lucena in southern Spain, because we see there this already beginning to see now a connection. Uh, at, at the Afasi was one of the architects of Torah studies in Spain and among Jewry in general. I think we might have missed some of that, but that's that. Now let's come over here and let's take a look at this map. So do the best I can about getting it close, but I think too much closer I can't get it without losing the space let's see what he says let's go down here so here here we have north africa and apparently the area that we're talking about is pretty much this area with uh, also this darker blue so here here he says uh, first of all on the map we see that there's a magain david here and wherever you see that and we're going to see some like here's one in Kairouan, there's another one in Ashir, which we just mentioned in the previous uh, little blurb that we went through. And uh, here's another, another in different kinds of places. I can't pronounce their names. So, so let's start with uh, number one. In the mid ninth century, that's 850, let's say, Berber tribes revolt against the Umayyads. So apparently the native peoples of this area are called Berbers. I've never been there, so I don't wouldn't know a Berber from a barber, but this is Berbers. So Berber tribes revolt against Umayyads, establish states whose capitals become centers for Jewish settlement. So we got along with the Berbers. Number two, that's up here. So he said we have a a, a map or. We have a line here on this map that points to this place called Kalat, or I'm not sure. He says, Yehuda ben Kurash, Korish, author of First Comparative Study of Semitic Languages. For that is what a philologist does. So he says, where was he? I guess, uh, let's see. Looks like he was right around here, somewhere around these mountains. Now the, the, uh, the striped area right here that we're talking about, he says this is the first extent of Almohads, who are also called al -Muhuadin. So he says the, the Almohads, that's the furthest extent that they, their, their control was, these are the area of the Almohads, okay? So here's number three. Where's number three? Here. 
Fustat, which is over here in Egypt, it becomes the capital of the Fatimid Caf of Caliphate, which ran between 1083 and 1089. It's only three, six years. David ben Daniel, head of Fustat Academy, that is, I guess, a yeshiva, strives to impose his authority on Palestinian Academy. So apparently there was a very strong yeshiva in Fustat, which is where the Rambam wound up. And uh, he says, strives to impose his authority on Palestinian Academy, so he wants to do that. He wants to control the, what's going on, apparently, in Palestine at that time. Number four, the end of the 10th century, it's coming close to the year 1000, the status of the city improves and becomes center for Jewish scholars. So this is a place called Cairoan. Number five. Here we go. In the year 1032, so where we're pointing out right here, Fez. Fez is a big Jewish center. We see the Jewish star there. The city, uh, the city is destroyed by Berber Sheikh. Sheikh. Jewish activity continues, though. We got along with the Berbers. Some scholars, including the Rif, establish study centers in Al Andulas. Where is Al Andulas? Uh, right here. I don't see it. Really quickly. Okay, that was number five. Number six. Over here in the year 1071, Yusuf ibn Tashvin, leader of the Al Moravids, that's another group, another Muslim group, imposes large tribute on the Jews. Many flee, many Jews flee to Al Andulas. So, Different relationships you see that we have with the different rulers, and the rulers is like a rolling ball, just keeps changing and changing around. Right now, the Jewish people in Eretz Yisrael are under the thumb of the Americans. Without the Americans, it's hard to see how they would manage. Number seven. From the years 1130 to 1160, the Almohads, who are the Almohads? The Almohads are really the people who, who drove the Rambam out of Spain, I believe. Established, con, uh, an established confederation near the Atlas Mountains. He says around here, these are the mountains, mountains areas here, I guess. In complete conquest of North Africa. Jews slaughtered. Slaughtered. He stood with his sword, just, just like we saw. And undergo forced conversions. Many ostensibly converse to Islam. Others, including Maimonides, flee. So here we have what happens. Jews are forced to bow down or take the turban, as they say. They're forced conversions. Others convert to Islam. And then many others flee. That's the time. That's the years that we're talking about. How the Jews survived the Middle Ages. Wait for the next year. This is Boris Fleischman. I'm at the Tikkun Elevator Cola.